Hi everyone, Joseph here. You know, Jewish guy, carpenter, all round nice guy, stepdad to the son of God. By now, I'm sure you all know the story that led up to the birth of Jesus. My wife, Mary, probably told you all about it. So today, I'm just going to talk to you about what happened afterwards. The birth went well. You know, considering it was a strange town, we were unhoused, and we had to put the baby in a manger afterwards instead of the perfect bassinet I'd crafted for him back home in Nazareth. But I guess I'd be putting that on Gumtree, because he won't be returning to Nazareth for quite a while. Oh, and some shepherds heard the news and came to worship him, so that was pretty crazy. Eight days after the baby was born, we took him to the temple, and he was circumcised. We named him Yeshua, the name the angel had told us before he was born. The name meant to rescue, to deliver, which made a lot of sense with who he grew up to be. Yeshua was Hebrew. Today, you'd call him Jesus, so I will too. In Jerusalem, we dedicated him to the Lord and made a sacrifice to God, as was Jewish custom when the firstborn was a boy. Of course, Jesus' life was always going to be lived for the Lord. The shepherds weren't the only ones to visit us. Some time later, some magi from the east came to see Jesus. They followed a star all the way to Bethlehem. They even bestowed him with gifts. Uh, darling, what are we supposed to do with a jar of myrrh? Uh, I'm not sure. Just smile and wave, hun. After the wise men had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to me in a dream. Joseph. Just five more minutes, Mary. Joseph, get up. I changed him last time. Get up. Flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. Stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Okay, I'm awake. So we left that very night, Mary, Jesus and I. It was a lot of travel, over 690 k's, but we made it. We were refugees and we didn't know how long we would be there. It was hard to know whether I was doing the right thing to keep my family safe not knowing how long we could maintain our lifestyle in Egypt, but it was worth it. We stayed in Egypt until after Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken about through the prophet Hosea. I called my son out of Egypt. Unfortunately, it meant that during our time in hiding, Herod had thousands of baby boys killed to try and eliminate the threat of a newborn king. I always felt awful about that, guilty, but I was doing what the Lord had told me and I knew that keeping Jesus safe during this time would ultimately save the lives of many. Eventually, I was alerted to the fact that Herod had died. Joseph. There was no iPhone back then, remember? Get up. This kind of feels like deja vu. Get up. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are now dead. Sounds good to me. Just like before, I got up, awoke Mary and Jesus, and returned to the land of Israel with them. So we went back another 600 plus K journey to get home. It felt good to be going back, but when we got to Judea, I was hesitant. I learnt that the new ruler in Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, and to be honest, I was afraid to go in. Of course, as was becoming custom, God sent a warning to me in a dream.
Hello again. Don't be afraid. Gotcha. Not my first radio, Gabe. We should probably still maintain some professionalism, though. Got it. Sorry. Gabriel, it is. We left Judea and headed north to the region of Galilee and settled in Nazareth. Even though he wasn't born there, he was raised as a Nazarene. This fulfilled what the prophets had said once again. He will be called a Nazarene. And that's pretty much the end of my mention in the story of Jesus. Sure, there's the temple story, but for the most part, this is the end of the road for me. I was able to raise him pretty normally. I was his earthly father and taught him earthly father things. He learnt my trade, carpentry, though he ended up becoming a rabbi, a teacher. And one day, after I myself had passed, he would eventually die, and then conquer death for our sins. And I know, I know, I'm not his real dad, but it felt like a pretty proud dad moment. Anyway, thanks for listening to my story. I hope you were able to get something from it and from my perspective. Bo-do-blib, bo bo